Genji's deflect and the pyro's air blast serve similar purposes in their respective games, giving each character a way to protect themselves and deal some damage at the same time. How the two differ, though, says something about each game. Deflect is a timed ability lasting a couple seconds, during which Genji's immune to most frontal ranged attacks. Any of these resisted hit scan or projectile attacks are then reflected to wherever Genji is aiming. After that, it goes on cooldown for a bit before it can be used again. Air Blast is an instantaneous effect, costing flamethrower ammo when used. Any projectiles in an area in front of the pyro are reflected, and it has a rate of fire similar to that of the explosive weapons it's designed to be used against. It can also push away enemies and extinguish teammates. The most obvious difference between the two is their relative skill floors and ceilings. Air Blast is harder to use well due to the timing, positioning, and aim required, and while Deflect theoretically has the potential to reflect a huge amount of damage, that relies almost entirely on your enemies making mistakes rather than you being skillful. But that aspect of TF2 vs Overwatch has been discussed to great length already. There's something else about these two abilities that I want to talk about. What actually are they? As in, what is the character doing to justify reflecting attacks? For the Pyro, it's pretty simple. They use the functionality of the flamethrower to send out a burst of compressed air, causing the force required to turn at grenades and rockets and push enemy players away. Genji, on the other hand, pulls out his sword and with superhuman speed, deftly deflects every bullet, arrow, bomb, and rocket that comes towards him. The amount of work each character puts in in order to accomplish the tasks is very different. The pyro does almost exactly the same amount of work the player does, likely just pressing a button. Whereas Genji basically can perform a miracle every handful of seconds. In a way, this is a rationalization of the lower end of the skill floor, rather than the player putting in the work, Genji is. But there's something more here about how the characters in each game are meant to be perceived. Overwatch characters are cool, powerful, and capable. Well, TF2 characters can be those things. Take a look at the character shorts for each game. In general, for both games, they present the spotlighted character showing off their skills and beating enemies with ease. The difference is that in TF2, it's against other characters, but in Overwatch, it's nameless grunts. When two characters do come up against each other in an Overwatch cinematic, it's an increase in difficulty, a boss battle. In TF2, each character is seen destroying all the other characters in their own short, and being destroyed in everyone else's. No matter who controls the character, Genji is supposed to feel badass. The Pyro is meant to feel as badass as the player is able to make them feel. The first consequence of this is that Overwatch characters are better defined, whereas TF2 characters when used can sometimes not quite fit their characters. Look no further than Give Us Engineers, wandering around the battlefield unsure how to use their buildings while playing a character that's supposed to have a dozen PhDs. There's a sort of duality with the TF2 characters in this way. On one hand, they're extremely skilled mercenaries with a lot of firepower and talent. On the other, they're foolish idiots running around and screaming. A failed rocket jump makes the soldier look like an idiot, but you won't be laughing when he flies across the map and bombs your medic. When a heavy's mowing you down, he's a powerful, menacing force, but when he's backstabbed or headshot, suddenly that menace turns into a slow doofus, the butt of a joke. Just look at that long, drawn-out death animation. Dominated, you fatuous, fat-headed fat man! <laughs> While to some extent, this may make the characters seem inconsistent, it also means that the perception of the characters is tied to the ability of the player. When someone does something impressive in TF2, you're encouraged to view it not as the character being strong, but the player being skilled. Compare this to, say, Ultimates in Overwatch, which are loud, flashy, and draw a lot of attention, but also give a lot of easy-to-use power in a similar way to how Deflect does. Getting a 3k with Genji's, or any other offensive ult, is likely to be seen and praised, but getting a 3k without it requires more skill and is usually more impressive. The characters in TF2 are tools which the player can use to reflect their skills. In a way, you connect to and become the character, to the point where you forget that there's a character between you and the weapons. In Overwatch, the heroes are not to be immersed with, but instead taken a turn to control. A button press for you is a heroic feat for the character. You're to be impressed and awed, not by the players, but by who they're playing. The differences between Air Blast and Deflect aren't on their own extremely significant. They're merely parts of the overall differences between the two games, and how they want their characters to be perceived, and the role the player fills in that. And the differences suit each game. Compared to TF2, Overwatch has a drastic decrease in focus on individual skill. And from a narrative perspective, it's always taken itself very seriously, contrasting with TF2's comedic leanings. As likely the most successful examples of the weird hero-shooter pseudo-genre, 
they're useful as foils to each other to compare how they handle similar problems that arise, despite how different they really are. In that way, they reflect each other.